Hi, it's Sandra from Sandra D Imagery, and I'm introducing Parker the Penguin to you. One of my recent fun, whimsical images that I created. And what I'm going to do is break down the process, my thinking, the layers that I used in Photoshop. It's a combination of three AI backgrounds or elements that I've added. I've added in some of the elements from my stash, for example, the penguin and the basket. And then I use generative fill to actually expand the canvas, which gave me a lot more freedom to give depth or height in my image and also to my color grading. Let's dive in and have some fun with Parker and see how he actually was created. This is the base image that I created using AI. The keywords that I put in was an old vintage rowboat because I didn't have one in my stash. And when it produced this, I went, this is what, exactly what I was after and I can do something with it. But what it didn't give me was the height that I was after to give a little bit more what I call playroom to put another element, for example, a sail or the penguin that might be a little bit taller. Because my original vision was just to have the penguin sitting in the boat. But as I started to go through and, and develop this image, I started to use my imagination and think, well, what can I put in here? What's going to tell the story? So what I've done is I've extended the canvas to give me that height that I was after. My next layer is where I use generative fill and I wanted to add a little bit more depth or height in that sky and this is the first generative fill that Photoshop produced for me and as soon as I saw it I went it's the colours, it's exactly the mood that I'm after. So then what I started to think, well, I know I'm going to put the penguin in. What else can I do with this? So I then created another image or an element in AI of an old sailboat. And I'll turn that on and you can see the sails. Now, I did try generative fill to get the sail, but I couldn't nail it. I, I had a few issues with it. And it's what I call the workaround. If you know Photoshop and the techniques and the tools, you can get around the workarounds. Now, what I'm going to do is I'll disable this mask and you can actually see that is the image that I created using AI. Keywords was an old sailing uh, boat with canvas sails. And this is exactly what I was after. So I'll enable that layer mask. So I did a little bit of masking to get rid of the background and it just seemed to sit in that boat perfectly. So now it's starting to build and I think, okay, let's put in Parker. And there he is, it's just sitting there. This is when I take a step back and I look and I think, does the color and tones of Parker working with the background? Is it too strong and contrasty? This is just a personal preference for me. This is about tweaking it to the color grading that I liked. So my next layer is a hue and saturation with a clipping mask. Now, when I turn this layer on, you'll see that the changes are very small. And that's what I do to work with depth of color is, I might just do several layers of a hue and saturation, but I only make small adjustments. So. I'll turn that layer on and I'll turn it off. And you can see in the umbrella, just in this area here, it changes the tone. It's got a little bit what I call a softer tone. Now it's working with me and I think, yep, I'm happy with that. All right, let's use generative fill again and see what we can do with the sky. And there it is. By extending the canvas, giving the height or the depth for the image, it gives a little bit of breathing space or negative space. Now, I know I had to play with this quite a bit to get the feel that I was after. What you're seeing in my layer stack is the end product, but what you're not seeing is 
my tweaking or that didn't work what else am I going to do I'll try something else that didn't work okay what's my work around and so the more that you play with Photoshop and different techniques and different tools you start to have what I call a toolbox and then you can go in well that didn't work what's the other tool that I can use now I look at it and I think I'm quite happy with that it's about getting my elements in the right place so the next layer is a hue and saturation and I really dialed that down I just toned it down it's still to me got depth of color but it's a softer color palette which is is my style for other people they may like contrast um, they may want to really have strong and vibrant it's a personal style at this point I sat back and looked at it and went okay it's a penguin sitting in a boat with a sail it's got a sky mm, can I can I push it a little bit further what can I do I had also created some other backgrounds using AI and I went in and I thought oh, I'm gonna have a look what I've created the best thing is just to play an experiment so when I'm creating an image like this I always have Lightroom open and so I'll go in and have a look at my backgrounds my stash sometimes I don't have a clear idea of what I'm after and then as I'm looking through my catalog of images and backgrounds and elements I go oh I wonder can I try that and this is exactly what I did for the next layer I'm going to turn it on now you have these magical fish and it looks like lotus lilies just popping in the background now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that opacity right up now you'll see that there's some masking here there's the mask there but that combined two backgrounds and so I got this what I call fantasy look of, of fish and that's what it was all about just having fun I'll dial that back to the opacity of 37 because the hero to me is the boat and Parker not the background the background is just the support so that's why I dialed down the opacity now I remember playing with different blend modes I tried if I come back up here and I tried multiply you know lighten I just experiment sometimes to see exactly what I can get and this is where I got the opacity dropped but I kept the blend mode as normal again I sat back and went okay I'm happy with the background and that little bit of fantasy that I just added but okay he's in a boat what's he doing is he going fishing is he just sailing along oh hold on a minute he may be going fishing he's hungry again it's just the whimsical touch I'm running with my imagination so I went into the stash and I added a basket and I put that in there now I went okay I'm going to add some fish and I went into the stash and I looked at all the fishes that I've got and I just couldn't find one that I liked that the coloring I've got some favorite fish I know that sounds silly but they're in the stash but it it was just not the colors that I wanted so as you do I thought I'd go in and see if I could create some fish using generative fill now I'll click on that layer and I'm going to disable the mask and I'll zoom up and you can see that that is the fish that's just there and it's got the background but that's all right that's why I use the mask so I've just added one fish and I went oh I don't know I, I, I think that could be a few more fish in there let's come in and have a look now what I did like with the generative fill was that it actually got the tones and colors that I was after again I didn't want it to be bright orange or red or yellow I wanted it to blend and harmonize with the colors so I duplicated the fish there it is there's the second fish we'll just bring that over a little bit here then I added the third fish 
and there is Parker's dinner fun. It's about stopping and thinking and looking at your image and going, is there balance with all the elements? What else can I add? Or more importantly, what you don't add. And I know that I experimented when I was working with the fish. I, I tried an octopus, I think. I tried seaweed. I tried different things. But when I got these fish, it was exactly what I was after. And then I thought, do I, do I put fish up here in the front of the boat? Do I put another element? And I thought, no, it works as is. Sometimes the minimal approach when you're doing a composite can work just as much instead of having lots of elements in there. That's a personal preference for me. And that's just how my style is. Now I looked at it and I thought, well, the sails are a bit bright. They're a bit dominant. So I just toned them down with a curves layer. Now when I look at it, I think, oh, okay, I'm getting into color grading now. So the next layer that I used was a cyan photo filter. And that gave me some real definition in the blue. So the photo filter is just up here. And I tend to use cyan more than the warm, depending on the image, but for this one I use cyan. Then I added a brightness and contrast to give it a little bit more bump up and a little bit more contrasty. And that is what I do sometimes, but then I'll dial the colours down. Then this next layer it was a merged layer. And then I started to think, oh, I should have done this at the beginning. And it's the learning curve when you're starting with AI imagery. When you create them, they're very small. And I didn't realize this, but then I realized I had to upscale these AI images to get a lot more pixels, if I can put it that way. I did go out and buy Topaz Gigapixel. Um, what that does now is I can upscale it to a larger image and it gives me a little bit more pixels to play with. Uh, it is expensive, but it is worth the investment if you're doing AI imagery. Even though different programs, say Midjourney, Leonardo, Firefly, you can upscale it. Using a plugin gives you a lot more pixels, if I can put it in that simple terms. Um, because what I want to do is end product. I'd like to print some of these down the track. So I know that I've got to make it a, a good size image. Coming back, I've learned that I should have done that probably in the first two layers, not towards the end. But that's part of the learning curve. Um, and it's not that bad if you do it at the end anyway. So I'll turn that layer on. And then what I did on that layer was actually add a little bit of uh, Topaz Studio just to soften those tones. Again, another plugin. I've done a merge. Now, when I look at it and I zoom up, sometimes I look to see are the edges hard on the elements that I've, I've added? So when I looked at the boat, I thought, no, that, that works. Um, yeah, Parker's not too bad there. He's not too hard edged. And that can be one of the tricks that you need to work on when you're using your own photos or if you're using a, another AI image as an element. If I was going to soften the edges, I would use the smudge tool. And I have a video tutorial on the Learning Hub on my website, Sandra D Imagery, and I show how I use the smudge tool. But, you know, that was fine. Parker's sitting there quite nicely. The next trick that I use is I put noise. And I find noise is one of those disguises that I will use in composite imagery. I know when I first started in photography, it was all about getting rid of the noise. But when you're combining different elements, particularly when you're combining, say, several photos together to make a composite or you're using AI, Sometimes by adding some film grain or noise as your final layer, it just 
blends all those elements together and it gives it a little bit of a grainy vintage feel and I'll turn that layer on and we'll come in I'll turn that layer off and on and it just puts in some little extra grainy pixels if I can use that technical term uh, I use Nick um, you can use noise um, in the filters option in Photoshop it's totally up to you what you've got available I've sat back and I thought I'm happy with it happy with the elements it's a bit too bluey so one of my go-to techniques is I'll use a hue and saturation and I just dial it down just a tad you can't see it but it is just dropped down a little bit and there's Parker sitting there in his boat going fishing he's got his fish for dinner I added in several backgrounds from AI I've added the color grading and more importantly I had fun and that's what it's about it's it's about having fun being creative and experimenting and trying different things have fun experimenting and I hope that you enjoyed seeing how Parker was created.